In this video, we're going to be taking vignettes to a whole new level. Hold on, what's a vignette? This is a vignette. And believe it or not, vignettes are actually camera defects. And that's kind of the camera defect that we love and recreate for creative purposes. I still remember before 2015, I used to pronounce vignette as vignette. And, and I know some of you guys also did, but that's kind of the way the English language works. After all, Iceland is island, but that's besides the point. Today we're going to learn how to create customized vignettes in Photoshop so that even after creating that vignette, you're still able to control a lot of other features like how much into the frame the vignette is, how much blurred the vignette is, a lot of other things. Everything non-destructive after creating the vignette. Also to ease up and spice up your projects, I'm going to give you a set of eight actions that will allow you to instantly create vignettes. Just click on that action, click on that play button and your vignette is ready. Even after that, you're still able to control every aspect of the vignette. But I still insist that you learn how to create that vignette because maybe you're using Photoshop in 2020 or maybe you're using an older version of Photoshop and that these actions might not work. And it's always good to learn the fundamentals. Maybe you want to create something creative with it. So without any further ado, let's get started. First things first, why do we need a vignette? Of course, for taking a creative approach. But the most important feature of a vignette is taking the attention away from the edge of the image to that of the subject. So that's the main feature of the vignette is to drive the attention of the viewer towards the subject. And if your vignette is not fulfilling that, no use of that vignette. One of the other usage of vignette is to distinguish your image from the background, which we'll talk about later in this video. So to create a vignette, the first thing that you need to do, have your image opened in Photoshop. Really easy, really basic. I've already done it. And then create a solid color adjustment layer. Okay, click on this icon and choose solid color. You can choose any color you want, but I'm going to choose black. Okay. Now, once you choose black, you might want to change the canvas background to dark gray to make it distinguishable. And then what you have to do, you have to select everything, select the whole canvas to select the whole canvas. What was the shortcut? Control A. Okay. Select the whole canvas. Now select the mask. Okay. Select the mask of the solid color adjustment layer and then go to select modify contract. Okay. Now, how much into the frame do you want your vignette to be? Ask yourself that question. If the image is big, as you can see, the size of the image is 5184 into 3456 pixels. You might need a bigger number here. Okay. Also, this bar is very useful. Pro tip here, you can see a lot of whole lot of things here. Okay. Let's close it for a second. I'm going to show you how, what you can see here. You can see the document dimensions, the color profile used, see sRGB used in this thing, document sizes. This is 51.3 MB. This is consuming right now. A lot of other things that you can see here. So I've currently set this to document dimensions to see how big the images so that I can figure out how many pixels feathering it needs, how many pixels the, the effect it needs, a lot of bunch of other stuff. So document dimensions is your go to number that you might want to keep here. 51843456. So select modify contract. Okay. So in here, since this is a big image, I would have maybe 350 set here and click OK. And make sure you check apply at canvas bounds. Okay. What is that? I'll explain it to you later. It's going to take some time depending upon the size of your image and the speed of your computer. It's going to contract the selection and give you a frame. Okay. So let's see what it does. So it has not contracted the selection yet. I don't know. Yes, it just did it. All right. Now what you have to do, make sure the mask is selected and make sure the foreground color is black. If it's not press D to reset the swatches and then press X. If it's black and white, you can always press X to toggle between the foreground and the background colors. Remember? Okay. Once it's black, press Alt backspace. If you're using a Mac, Option Delete. Okay. Controller Command D to deselect that. Now let's turn this off for a second. I had to explain you something I remember. Now, why did I check Apply at Canvas Bounds? I checked it because, for example, you're making a rough selection here. Okay. Something like that. And you go to Select, Modify, contract and you do not check it and say it's 12 pixels, something like that. This will contract, but this did not contract from the canvas bounds. Okay. But we wanted it to contract from canvas bounds. So that's why we checked it. Okay. 
Now we have a frame, check it out. Now this is not like a vignette, we need to blur this, okay? But non-destructively, how to do that? Open up the properties. For me, if I double click on this, it opens up the properties of the layer. I've set it that way. If it's not happening, you can always go to Windows and then Properties, okay? There you go. Now here, increase the feather. Now what's the standard feather? Obviously you can choose any feathering, like maybe 150 or something like that. But let me give you a pro tip. What is the standard feather? How do I personally determine what should be the feather here? Remember the value that we applied while we were contracting the selection? What was the value? It was 350. Now 350 will work perfectly here. That's what I have found out by doing a trial and error. Okay, you can always edit it the way you want, but this works for me excellently. Now you can always close it. And then opacity, is your best friend, as I always say. There you go, isn't this beautiful? Now once you have applied the vignette, you can always change the color of the vignette. So you can click on this, double click on this, and this will open up the color picker, and then you can pick any color you want. Maybe we would go with something like dark blue. Now this looks pretty nice. Pro tip, you can pick a dark color from the image itself that gives you a more natural effect. For example, this color. Watch. Now, this is quite light. How to make it dark? How to make the same color dark? Here's another pro tip. Choose B. What does B stands for? B stands for brightness. If you're in the same color, you can go dark in the same shade of the color. Okay? And the same color, different shade. There you go. The same color, click OK once you're satisfied. Isn't this amazing? Also, we'll talk about how to apply the actions, but let's try something more creative. As you can see in this case, the image size is very large, 7,000 into 5,000 approximately. So we might need a higher value while we are contracting the selections. But guess what? I'm not gonna do it again. I have created an action to do that, which I'm gonna give you, go to Windows, Actions. I'm gonna give you this set called Vignette Picks Imperfect, I'm gonna give you this set, okay? So it contains eight vignette actions. Now what are these values? Vignette 25, Vignette 75, these are nothing but the contract values of the selection, okay? The bigger the image, the higher the value you select. 500 is the maximum, 25 is the minimum. For this image, I think 400 would work fine. Now once you have selected that, you just have to play it, and that's it. Your vignette will be applied in a moment, okay? Let's wait for a second. As you can see, the vignette has now been applied. Now let's go ahead and close this actions bar. We don't need it anymore so that you can see my face, by the way. Now, after applying the action, you still can control a whole lot of stuff. As explained earlier, you can go to Windows and Properties, or you can double click on this mask and go to Properties, and then select this mask, and then you can still control the feather, okay? You can still control the opacity. Let's close it. Still control the opacity. By default, I have set the opacity to 20 for every action. You can always alter that, okay? Let's increase the opacity to 100. Now it's time for us to get creative with the vignette. Okay, how to get creative? How about trying different blend modes? Also, blend if. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so let's try different blend modes. Now one of the shortcuts to try different blend modes is Shift Plus. Okay, Shift Plus and Shift Minus. But then again, it's also time consuming. It doesn't work when you have selected the brush. When you have selected the brush and you press Shift Plus, the brush blend mode changes, not the layers, okay? So all you have to do, you have to select the Move tool and then press Shift Plus. You know what my favorite way is to try on different blend modes? My favorite way is just click on this one and if you're using a mouse, then use the scroll to change blend modes very swiftly. Look, isn't this beautiful? All right, let's try overlay. Now, see how glow, how much glow this gives to the edges. To the normal one, this is the normal one. This makes the edge a little smoother. Overlay gives it a little glow. Also, you can try in different things like screen and light and a lot of other stuff, okay? So when you're in normal, you can also try in different colors with it, okay? Double click on it and you can try, select the hue, you can try red, you can even try green and all all kinds of stuff, all right? So that's one of the things you can do. Also, one of the other things that you can do with it is blend if you can right click on it and go to blending options and take the slider of the underlying layer from right to left. Watch, the bright things go away. Press and hold alter option and click on this to make the edges smooth, the selection smooth, watch. This gives you a different kind of approach to adding vignettes, have a look, watch. 
it's a more natural vignette, isn't it? Now let's talk about when you might want to use vignette and when you have to use vignette. And this is kind of the pro tip that I have personally gained by experience, okay? So when I'm creating YouTube thumbnails, let me show you some of the examples. As you can see in this example, this is the thumbnail from one of my latest videos. Now if I turn the canvas color to white, you can see that it has a slight vignette to it. You know why? Because YouTube's background is what? White. So is Facebook's. So if you're posting something online, determine what the background color is of the website. Facebook is white, Twitter is white, a lot of social media is white, okay? Unless you are posting it to a website with a black background, you must consider looking at your image with a white canvas background, okay? So that's why I added a very faint vignette to it, okay? Let's look at the other image. Now in this, if I had not added a vignette, let me show you what it would have looked like without the vignette. Okay, so there is the vignette. I added some extra vignettes. So the point is, I have to find out where the vignette layer is. So the point is to distinguish the skin from the background white, I had to create the vignette to make it more catchy. And that's what you have to do whenever you're publishing any image online. I'm not saying you have to add the vignette, just make sure that it has some contrast with that of the white background. Why? Because most online image hosting social media has white backgrounds. Okay, all right, let's look at this one. If I had not added any of the vignette here, have a look. This would have been the image. Now you cannot distinguish this from this uh, from that of the white canvas background. Now, yes, this does look good, but obviously nobody's gonna click on this unless it's popping out. So you have to make that attractive. Have a look. How much of a difference it makes. Have a look at the final one. There you go. So that's all you have to remember about vignettes and social media. And I agree that today we actually literally tore up the anatomy of vignettes in Photoshop. And by the way, don't forget to download the actions. I'll link it up in the description below. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.